Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet. Need more when you get to the junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. It is run by Joe, come and be his guest at the junction. Here's a lady in the, she's as pretty as can be at the junction. Very good junction. Could, could, could I ask you just one question? Did you miss me? <laughs> Boy, did I miss you. Mm. And I told everybody about you, too. And they were all interested. Oh, of course, there was a few that acted as if they didn't care one way or another, but I just followed them down the street and gave them my whole story. Do you mean to say you followed perfect strangers down the street to talk about Kathy Joe? Yeah, only some of them weren't so perfect. Well, they acted as if I was bugging them. Imagine. Here, I'll put her down now, and you can get comfortable. Okay. <laughs> Incidentally, how come you wore that old jacket? Everything else need cleaning or something? Well, no, as a matter of fact, I wore this old jacket because I picked up a crop dusting job near Riverdale today. Pretty ambitious husband you got here, huh? You mean to tell me you could have been home a whole half a day sooner, but you stopped to pick up a job? Yeah, well, at the time, I didn't think it was a crime. Besides, it helped pay for this. Oh, darling, it's beautiful. But you shouldn't have. Yeah, I guess I can take it back. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> I guess I just missed you so much. I, I'd rather have you near me than, than have the crown jewels. Oh, yeah? Hmm. Well, a bigger catch than I thought. I should have played harder to get. No, you shouldn't. <laughs> but you're my darling, darling husband, and I love you very, very much. Mm. There's no two ways about it. I've got to get out of town more often. <laughs> Sweetheart, we don't want to wake Daddy, do we? Well, I guess we do. Well, we're just going to have to try. Oh, no. Steve? Steve? Well, for a couple of ladies who don't want to wake up Daddy, I got it. What's the matter? Crash, she's got it again. Well, what do we do? Get Dr. Craig. Get Dr. Craig. Right. Steve, don't you think you should get dressed first? Get dressed. Right. Well? Well, there's no doubt about it. You've got it again. The same rash? I'm afraid so. Well, what causes it? Oh, I wish I knew. There are literally hundreds, maybe thousands of things that could cause a rash. Then you can't possibly isolate it? Well, not without a tedious amount of testing, and even then we can't be absolutely sure. Oh, boy. Steve. Well, I'm sorry, but it seems to me to be a pretty sad state when medical science can't isolate one little allergy. I'm sorry, Steve. Oh, I know that, Doc. After all, Janet is doing everything she can. Well, in the meantime, what about little Kathy Joe? I know what I'd do. What's that? Well, if medical science can't figure out a way, why not try a little common sense, a, a little logic? 
see. No, no, that's all right. What have you got in mind? Well, she had a rash before, right? And then it went away, right? Right. And now she's got it again, right? Just try to figure out the difference between the time she has it and the time she doesn't. It's simple. Oh, honey. No, now, wait a minute. He might have a point. As a matter of fact, I think that's a very good idea. Well, let's see. What's been different? Please. Yeah? Well, the baby had the rash before you left last week, didn't she? Mm-hmm. And when did you leave? Monday night. And when did the rash start clearing up? Tuesday morning. Janet, you don't think... Hmm. Oh, come on now. That is just a thought. Well, I don't like it. Well, you said to use a little logic. Well, I don't want my logic used against me. <laughs> well, what do you think we should do? Well, I hate to say it, but... Then don't say it. Well, honey, this is our baby's health we're thinking of. No, honey, but... but uh... Go ahead. Well, if we could isolate you just for a little while, then we could see if it's you that the baby's allergic to. And what if she is? Then we can take steps to combat it. And until we find some way, you'll have to live away from home. Oh, gee, that's going to be awfully hard on him. Yes, I know. I mean, he just got back after being away a whole week. Yes. Now he has to leave again so soon. But if that's the way it has to be, that's the way it has to be. Hey, <laughs> Joe, you mean you're willing to let me move out just like that? Darling, we have no choice. You know, what about what you said, that you'd rather have me near you than the Crown Jewels? Oh, that. Just a figure of speech. Just a figure of speech. I'd like a room, please. A what? A room. This is a hotel, isn't it? Well, yes, but a room for you? Yeah, for me. You see? This is a suitcase. Yeah, I noticed. Look, I'll pay for the room. Oh, no, we wouldn't think of charging you. Especially an ex-brother-in-law. Girls, if you don't mind. Steve, among well, young married couples, these little spats are bound to happen. If you must know, it was nothing like that. Oh, a big spat, huh? <laughs> well... Joe! It must have been horrible if he doesn't want to talk about it. <laughs> Doc, would you mind explaining to this little group why I'm here? Would you rather I tell them? If you don't mind, I'd like to forget the whole thing. What room? Well, I guess four will be fine. Thanks. Kathy Joe has been breaking out with a rash, and while Steve was gone, it disappeared. You mean she's allergic to her own father? <laughs> that could be why he didn't want to talk about it. Clever deduction. Well, I'm not sure this is it, but it's worth the experiment. In the meantime, I'm contacting Dr. Nicholson, a friend of mine who's an allergy specialist. Well, I guess I'd better go stay with Betty Joe and take Steve's place. Of course, it may not be the same. I hope not. <laughs> oh, I feel bad about doing this to Steve, but it seemed to be the only thing I could do. Reminds me of the case of old Hank Biddle. Every four weeks, he break out in lumps. And every month, the doctor takes something away from him. Like the first month, he'd take fish. Second month, vegetables. And the third month, meat. But the lumps were still there. Did they ever find out what caused it? Yeah. His wife was hitting him over the head of the rolling pin. <laughs>
Sarah, is it true that Betty, Joe, and Steve have split up? <laughs> no kidding. Oh, doggone. <laughs> Let me get through with Checker. Maybe we can pitch a few horseshoes. Swell. <laughs> oh, look, Joe, you're a fine Checker opponent and a wonderful horseshoe adversary, but beyond that, I do prefer my wife. <laughs> Hi, Seth. Hi, Steve. What are you doing down here this time of day? Oh, well, I just thought I'd better come down. Sorry, Steve. Oh, don't be so shook. I only took two of his men. <laughs> I'm sure it'll all work out. Not unless he gets a couple of kings in there. <laughs> Sam, I get the feeling there's something I should know. Or maybe you should know? Well, uh, yeah, Steve, I'd like to talk to you. But not as a friend, as an editor and reporter. Okay, go ahead. Well, when did this split up between you and Betty Joe happen? And who got the baby? And is there any chance of a reconciliation? Sam. No, no, not too fast now. One thing I pride myself on is getting all the facts accurate. Sam, there was no split up. There was no split up. No split up. Well, there must be some mistake. That's not the way I heard it up and down the valley. Oh, and just what did you hear up and down the valley? Well, it's on a party line that you and Betty Joe parted. Well, that's what the party line says. And Sarah confirmed it. Then there must be something to it. Sarah hasn't been wrong in years. <laughs> Sam, I don't appreciate this rumor going around. I George, she was wrong once. She had old Lady Frisbee running off with a beekeeper instead of the harness maker. The way it worked out, she'd have been better off with a beekeeper. Ain't what it's cracked up to be a woman modeling for a harness maker. Sam, well, I'd like your help in stopping this rumor. Well, okay, I'll be glad to cooperate, but first I'd have to know why you did split up. We didn't split up! <laughs> now look, I'm staying here at the Shady Rest because our baby has some sort of a rash, and oddly enough it goes away when I'm not around, and Doc Craig is trying to figure out why this happens. Oh, so that's it. Steve, I've never been so happy over anything in my life. Okay, now look, when you put your paper out... And, uh, but Steve, that won't be for another week. I just put out an issue yesterday. Oh, great. A whole week of this rumor running wild. I'll tell you what I'll do. As a good friend, I'll put out a special issue just for you. Well... With a big red headline. Uh, baby daughter allergic to Steve Elliott. <laughs> Sam, forget it. I'll try to counteract this rumor another way. Suit yourself. Sure move. That does it. You said he didn't have anything to worry about. Who is it? It's Steve. Oh, dear. You better let him in. Can I at least see her? Well, yeah. I guess it would be all right. Thanks. Well, how's Kathy Joe's rash? Oh, it cleared up beautifully. It seems the minute you went away, the rash went away. It cleared up just like that. It's really a miracle, huh? You can spare the details. If you don't mind, I'd like to talk to my wife. Nice little place the two of you got here. Yes, dear. I'd uh, like to talk to you about something. Sure. Betty Joe, you're not the one that's allergic to me. Oh yeah, that's right. You mind? Oh, I don't mind. Honey, the reason I came over is we've got to do something about this terrible rumor that's going all over the valley. What room? That you and I have split up. Oh, no. How did that ever get started? Well, it's been on the party line, and they got better coverage than Associated Press. <laughs> How can we do to stop it? Well, for one thing, I thought maybe we could go out on a date together tonight. Mm. Golly, I don't know. No, it'll be all right. You've known me quite a while now. <laughs> okay, let's do it. It's a date. I think it sounds like fun. It'll uh, just be the two of us. <laughs> I uh, don't want to cause a lot of trouble, and I don't want to cause a big sink. And I certainly don't want to seem ungrateful. But how long is this going to go on? Oh, Steve, I know how you feel, but you've got to be patient. I'm patient. 
But all I want is an, an inkling, a hint, as to when I can move back with my wife and baby. Well, let's hope it won't be too long. You're a great comfort, Doc. What do I have to do? Wait till she grows up and moves away? Maybe we could send her off to college, and then I could spend the night with my wife. <laughs> no. They're bound to notice that she can't read or write. Maybe she won't have to. Can she carry a protest sign? <laughs> Thanks, Doc. Uh, I guess I'm not in the mood for a laugh. I can't even go see my own child. Tell you, I wonder if it'll be all right with medical science if I can visit my grandchildren. Uh, How about my great-grandchildren? Uh, well, now, let me see. Doc! <laughs> oh, Steve, of course you'll be reunited with Betty Jo. Well, there are some cases in which one person is so allergic to another that any communication is out of the question. But we're not thinking that way, are we? You tell me. No, we're not. Unless, of course... Oh, come on. All right, all right, we'll think positively. Now, when we hear from Dr. Nicholson, maybe this whole thing will be cleared up. In the meantime, let's not look for trouble. Let's not look? I've got news for you, Doc. I've already found trouble. Oh, there you are, Steve. Well, you ready for another fun day? Checkers and horseshoes and stuff like that. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> and the faucet in the kitchen was dripping, but Ed came by with the delivery, so he fixed it. And when we stopped by for morning coffee, and Mr. Drucker came by to see if we needed anything. Oh, yes. Jeff has a new record player, and he brought it by with some real groovy records, and... What's the matter? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Except it sounds like everybody in the valley can go into my house except me. Steve, you're not jealous. You want to bet? <laughs> but Ed was just making a delivery. And Wendell was just being sociable. And Jeff is just Bobby Joe's boyfriend. And, and Mr. Drucker was just... I know what they're just. And I'm just sitting on the outside looking in. And I'll let you in on a little secret. I don't like it. Darling, maybe you'd like to walk me home. Is Bobby Joe there to snap the lights on and off? <clears throat> but it's daytime. Oh, good. She can just stand at the window and stare at it. You go ahead. I got a lot of work to do. But it's cold. I need something around me. Where is this? <laughs> I sounded so happy is because if the baby has the rash again, that means I'm not the one that caused it. You're absolutely right. You get the point? Yeah. But how do we know you weren't over there last night? Bobby, Joe, sure believe me, I... Was he here all the time last night? Well, I assumed he was. At least I saw him go upstairs to his room. Yeah. But he could have shinny down the drain pipe, you know. Bobby, Joe. Or tied bed sheets together and gotten out that way. Come on, Doc, let's get out of here. There's no way he could have sneaked over there. Bobby Joe, if you really want to know, I went down to the cellar and tunneled my way over there. Well, there's no doubt about it. It's the same rash. But what could cause it? Well, why don't you try logic? That's what you pounced on when you originally made me the culprit. Well, now, let's see. What's been different? I think it's fairly well established that Steve hasn't been here. You can say that again. Last night, he wouldn't even walk me home. Well, I gave you my jacket. Big deal. You weren't in it. Sorry? No, don't be. That could be the very clue we're looking for. What? Where's the jacket now? Is this what you wear when you're working? Yeah. Well, that could be what's causing the allergy. The insecticide that accumulates on your clothing from crop dusting. <laughs> so that's it. Well, the mystery's solved. Doc, you're okay. How does this mean that... that... <laughs> well, now, there's one time I'm glad I wasn't in it. <laughs> now, does this mean I can finally move back with my family? On one condition. <laughs> of you to come by and pay me a visit on these afternoons. Or was it because you heard we were having steak for dinner and you thought there might be a bone left over? <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to make you feel bad. Honey? Okay, dear. Here, you take these out to see. <laughs> Join me. <laughs> 
Tonight at AC, startling new evidence about the mysterious shroud of Turin. In the new Easter special, Behold a Mystery. Now, stay tuned for Green Acres. That's here on TV 39.